there! Today I'm going to talk about two art styles which are so similar I'd like to combine them into one lesson. The topic of this set of lessons is assemblage art, but I'd like to begin by talking specifically about combines. Combines, a precursor to assemblage, is a term used to talk specifically about Robert Rauschenberg's artwork. In 1954, there was no style name to call a work which was a combination of painting and sculpture. So Rauschenberg created the term combines to describe his works. When asked about bed, one of Rauschenberg's combines, he stated that he had simply run out of canvas and was unable to purchase more, so he began painting on his own quilt. He added a pillow to the piece and displayed it mounted on a wall. How did New York react to this kind of artwork? They were scandalized. However, if you think about it, they had already been exposed to this kind of art before. Remember the ready-mades created by Marcel Duchamp of the Dada artists, using found objects like a wheel and stool? Remember the splashy action painting by Jackson Pollock of the Abstract Expressionists? Rauschenberg found inspiration from both styles and just combined them. Get it? Combined them to create a combine? <laughs> anyway, on to assemblage art. The term assemblage was also created, for lack of a better word, to describe artwork that was assembled instead of painted, sculpted, or created through the use of other traditional art techniques. The first exhibit of this style, held in 1961 at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, showcased work by 138 assemblage artists. It was a way for the museum to group artwork that could not easily be categorized. Most of these works were collections of found objects, many employing painting and collage techniques as well. Louise Nevelson approached assemblage by filling boxes with found items and wood pieces stacking these boxes on their sides and painting the sculpture one solid color. The objects, no matter what they had been before, were now unified in one large scale assemblage piece. Artist Joseph Cornell also liked to box things up, but instead of disguising the items by painting them a solid color, like Nevelson, Cornell's individual boxes were themed collections, memorabilia from his life like three-dimensional scrapbooks, no doubt the inspiration for modern shadow boxes, showing pictures and artifacts simultaneously, in a deep picture frame. Some artists created what was known as junk sculpture, a branch of assemblage art created from trash or other unwanted items, transformed into art through sculpture. Kurt Schwitters is one such artist who enjoyed intentionally seeking out junk and carefully assembling it into artworks, giving the trash new life, new purpose. Assemblage artists all seem to have one common goal, to celebrate common, everyday objects, familiar objects, something people could relate to, which makes sense, since the style followed abstract expressionism, which was very difficult for the public to relate to. It also was a precursor to pop art, which also placed an emphasis on everyday objects and popular culture.